You have supported a local restaurant lately. Chances are you ordered for pickup or delivery on a website, or perhaps you dined in and scanned a QR code for the menu. But I wonder how many servers had to teach patrons how to scan that QR code, or what about customers who don't have a smartphone? It's just one example of why businesses need to pay close attention to who they're marketing to, to make sure their technology and their messaging is on target. Joining me now to talk about generational differences are marketing connections experts, Paul Schmidt from Unodus Multimedia, Jesse Flores of Super Web Pros, and Tim Haynes of Symposia Labs. Welcome to the show. Hi, Julie. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Okay, so first, I need to say that we're not saying by any means that you have to be young to master technology, but it is a fact that millennials and Gen Z have grown up with the internet. Jesse, I want to start with you. What does this mean for the purchasing habits? Yeah, great question. So, you know, many of us probably still think of like millennials as these punk college kids, right? Uh, but the reality is, is that they are now in their uh, 30s. They are starting to become uh, a pretty active part of the population and purchasing power is actually shifting pretty dramatically in, in that direction. Uh, you know, not only are uh, our millennials starting to come into their purchasing power, they also generally tend to be the best, most well-educated uh, population segment and also the highest on average income earners uh, out there. So even though right now the baby boomers still have more purchasing power in raw dollars uh, per capita, Millennials are millennials definitely have more money. Uh, and so what does that mean? That means that, first of all, these are digital natives who uh, think about uh, things very, very differently. They vote uh, or, or they purchase not just based on whether or not it's a cool uh, gadget, but whether or not it supports their values. Uh, they, they, their ethical and political considerations factor into their purchasing decisions by and large. Um, they also are really into omni-channel shopping. So they like to shop local but they do expect the local business to be as on point as Amazon, right? They're happy to patronize them, but you better have a website that they can go to and check things out before they come into your store. So uh, it's, a, it's a, a dramatic shift uh, in, in the economy, a dramatic shift in purchasing power, and certainly a lot of shifting in behavior. And of course, it's really important to know if you're targeting millennials, and I think we have a few of them on this panel right now, but if you're targeting millennials, we need to know where to reach them, right? So Tim, when it comes to marketing to different generations, what is the role of user experience? We hear that a lot in marketing. So COVID has acted as, I think, the final catalyst in that digital revolution that Jesse is referencing uh, you know, even my mom has come to expect that she can order products from even the smallest store online. If you're playing that pinch and zoom game on your phone, you're getting frustrated very quickly with the brand you're interacting with and you're having a bad user experience. So user experience is critical because it's often the first encounter that someone has with your brand. And of course, we need that first encounter to be a good one. Paul is our resident storyteller here. How does video play a role in marketing to different generations? Well, video has been kind of like the buzzword over the past year, especially. And uh, it's become the most ubiquitous tool, even more so because of the simple fact that you use it for entertainment, uh, social media, and now even communications. And so... And how does that really delve into the generational aspect? Well, then it becomes more of a platform driven situation than actual like, um, you know, the media aspect is, you know, we're, we're choosing a platform and, and you have all these different ages using similar platforms in different, different ways. I mean, and also you got to look at the time frame that you're sitting in front of a screen, you know, at, uh, you have YouTube and you have TikTok. They may have different video links and so on and so forth, but you may sit there for the same amount of time. And that's two, you know, and that's two generational platforms that people, people drive to. And so that is one of the biggest uh, aspects to uh, this generational marketing is the fact that, you know, you spend about the same amount of time, whether you're a millennial or Gen Z or even a boomer, it's just, um, just where you're spending it. And that's, that's the ubiquitousness of, of video um, in today's world. 
And of course, we've seen video growing in importance when this has been really the main medium for us to be able to connect, whether it's live video streaming or connecting through recorded videos online on these platforms, as you mentioned. Jesse, real quickly, I want to come back to you. What do you see yeah. as kind of the future with generational marketing? Um, I think the future, you know, to Tim's point, I think it's going to be uh, user experience. So everybody checks out everyone. They, everyone gets Googled before they do business with you. So I think it's going to be a combination of user experience, but also in-store customer experience, especially for local businesses. Um, you know, I would expect to see technology integrated across the platform from the moment someone discovers you to the moment they pay their bill. I mean, everything, everything there is a touch point. Uh, and I think that's probably where the future of this is going to be, is, is going to be. It's, I should be able to do anything I need to do with a person and on my phone. So make it easy for me to do both. Wow, absolutely. And of course, we've seen a hybrid of these things throughout COVID. It'll be really interesting to see what sticks around even once the pandemic is over. Jesse, Tim, Paul, thank you so much for sharing your insights. And, you know, Paul mentioned TikTok um, and YouTube. We In last week's episode, we talked about um, using video in various platforms. And that really ties into generational marketing. If you'd like to check that out, head to our website, see more from our experts at WLAJ.com slash expert connections. Just click the link for marketing connections.